In this video, I'm going to walk you through the mind map that I've been creating to represent the old school analog Zettelkasten that I'm creating while teaching a philosophy course called The Exam in Life. First, let me provide you with a little bit of context here. I'm about two weeks into teaching the exam in life this semester. I've asked my students to purchase a bunch of 4x6 index cards and use those to create a Zettelkasten based on the material we're going over this semester. So far, we've been taking notes on three texts. The first is a shortened version of the course syllabus, where I use quotations from a number of philosophers to lay out what we will be focusing on in the course this semester. You can find a link to that shortened version of the syllabus beneath this video. The second text consists of pages from Sonia Lyubomirsky's book, The Myths of Happiness. More specifically, it's pages from her chapter on money and happiness. And the third text is actually not a single text, but several paragraphs from three different texts about advertising. Now, most of the cards you will see in the mind map we're about to look at are cards that my students and I have created together in class. I've been having us create the first few cards together as a way of teaching the Zettelkasten method. But pretty soon, my students will be making their own decisions about what cards to create and how to organize those cards within their Zettelkastens. This map I'm about to show you is one that you can access on your own by clicking on the second link below this video. There's more in the mind map than I'll be going over in this video, and you're welcome to look at that stuff on your own. By the end of this video, it's possible you will be as excited as I am right now. I am very excited. All right, let's pull this thing up. So the mind map, as you can see, I am making it in Miro. And if you end up wanting to make a similar mind map, you might want to consider signing up for a free account with Miro. With a free account, you get three boards, and actually you only would need to use a single board to create a mind map to represent your own old school or analog Zettelkasten. So we'll start at the beginning here, and we've created a branch here that is devoted to the course. So if students at some point in the future want to add more courses to their Zettelkasten, they may do so. They could also add new topics that fall outside this course or perhaps any course that they might take in college. So this first card here and these other two that we see here that are in pink, I refer to these as folder cards. These are cards that themselves do not contain ideas. If they have anything on them, it is a list of the contents in the section represented by the folder card. So we've got this folder card for the entire course, the exam in life, then a second folder card specifically for philosophy, and then within this philosophy folder, I put another folder card, definitions of philosophy, and then we finally got to work creating our first what I call idea card. So this first card says that philosophy is thinking about thinking. And then the card that kind of follows upon that says that philosophy amounts to what the American philosopher John Dewey calls criticism. And on this mind map you can see in a couple places that I've added these green boxes where I explain the connection between the cards. Because that connection, although it's clear in my own mind when I'm making the connection, is not clear on the cards themselves necessarily. And so that's why I've added this little additional explanation here. So let's scroll over. And again, you'll see a couple other places where I have explained what the connections are between the two cards. And you can look here to get some sense of how you should be numbering your cards. So when it goes from 1 to 1a and then 1a to 1a1, uh, this is what is often referred to as a Folgezettel. Um, it's, a, it's a card that kind of follows upon or continues a line of thinking of the card preceding it. So each of these two cards here are continuations of this card here. So as I said, the second reading that we did this semester is about money and happiness. And so I've got some cards down here that are about money and happiness. So first is a folder card. I haven't taken a picture of this one. No need to really. 
and then what you see here are a bunch of idea cards that fall within this category of money and happiness. So this first card here is a card that says that money actually can buy happiness. Um, you just need to make sure that you're spending money on the right things. And one way of spending money on the supposedly right things is to give money away or to spend that money on gifts for, say, friends and family or perhaps make donations to those who are in need. And another way that you might spend money that can lead to happiness is to spend it on what Sonia Lyubomirsky refers to as some of the basic psychological needs. And the one she identifies here, which she is getting from a book by Tim Kasser called The High Price of Materialism, those basic psychological needs are competence, relatedness, and autonomy, which she briefly explains on page 173 of her book. And as I said, the third text, which actually consists of paragraphs from three different sources, is about advertising. And I had been thinking I would create a separate branch just for advertising, which you see over here. It's all lonely. Um, eventually, I will be adding some notes there. But the first couple notes that we created, I eventually decided that I wanted to have them be continuations of this idea over here that materialism leads to unhappiness. So this idea that materialism leads to unhappiness is an idea from Sonia Leo Bimirsky's book, as you can see here. So being materialistic makes people unhappy, according to lots of research, mountains of research, she says in her text. And then linked to this idea that materialism leads to unhappiness are these two ideas here. So materialism creates unhappiness in part because it damages relationships. There, too, I'm drawing on an idea from Leo Bamirsky. But then down here we see the two cards that are about advertising. So this first card talks about how advertising pushes people in the direction of being materialistic and therefore in the direction of being unhappy. And then as a continuation of this idea, I have a card here that basically says that advertising pushes us in the direction of un unhappiness by creating another kind of unhappiness. And that other kind of unhappiness is the unhappiness that is created when advertisements tell us that we have problems that we can solve supposedly only by buying certain products advertised to us. So advertising can lead to unhappiness insofar as it leads people to act materialistically, which again, mountains of research show is not a very good route to happiness. And in addition, advertising can make people unhappy by telling them they have problems that maybe they don't actually have. So again, as I said earlier, there is a link to this mind map beneath this video. So you are welcome to click on that link and check this out for yourself. And that's it for this video. Do not deny that you are very excited.